Welcome to the Bioptimizer's awesome health podcast. And now here's your host, Wade T. Lightheart. What is awesome health? It's actually an acronym that stands for air, water, exercise, sunshine, optimizers, mental beliefs and attitudes, and education. These are the pillars of peak health, and my team and I have created a free 12-week course that you can use to transform. Each day, you'll get a written and video lesson delivered to your inbox. Everything is covered from the foundations of digestion to advanced alternative therapies few people know about. And again, it's 100% free. Just go to bioptimizers.com. That's B-I-O-P-T-I-M-I-Z-E-R-S. Dot com. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It's Wayte Lightheart from Bioptimizers with another edition of the Awesome Health Podcast. And today we're going to talk about a very important nutrient. It's called glutathione and how it is imperative in warding off life-threatening diseases and combating the symptoms of aging. Now, we're also going to find out why glutathione is an essential part of the detoxification process and how diet and lifestyle changes impact glutathione production levels in the body. I'm actually very interested in this because um, genetically, there's an aspect of genetics and I don't produce a lot of glutathione and I'd like to know more about that today. And we're gonna get into that because we have an expert on the topic. Dr. Nayan Patel is a sought after pharmacist, wellness expert and thought leader in this his, this industry. He has been working with physicians since 1999 to custom develop medication for the clients and design a patient-specific drug and nutrition regimen. This is going to be the future of health. Talk about that as well. He has been the pharmacist of choice to celebrities, CEOs, and physicians themselves. He recently published his first comprehensive book, The Glutathione Revolution fight disease, slow aging, and increase energy. After 11 years of clinical research on the master antioxidant glutathione, Dr. Patel and his team developed a patented technology to deliver glutathione topically, changing the game on how best to absorb GSH systematically. From this technology, he additionally developed the Oro GSH antioxidant delivery system to create a skincare line to deliver antioxidants more efficiently and effectively than ever before at potent concentrations. So welcome to the show, Dr. Patel. Thank you for having me today. I appreciate it. So glutathione is this, like a lot of products out there, it's kind of got a tremendous amount of applications and promise with it. And yet a lot of the products on the marketplace don't seem to match what the scientists are saying in the lab. So maybe you can walk us through a little bit of the history of glutathione, why it's so prominent, how it came into the awareness of the market and then proliferated in the supplement industry with a wide variance of, say, uh, efficacy. All right. So uh, let's go back 140 years. Uh, the, don't go back there, just have to listen to me. Uh, when we first discovered glutathione as one of the most abundant molecules produced in the human body. And so over the last 140 years, all we have known for is one thing, is that, hey, a body produces enough of it, we need a lot of it. Uh, as we age, our, our levels keeps on declining. And so if there's a way to improve the levels and keep it stable to a, to a high normal ranges like we have in the youthful age, there's a potential of reduction of oxidative stress and hopefully have a fighting chance to have a longevity in this world where longevity is linked to actually health span. Uh, of a lifelong, uh, how long we can live is de- com- completely dependent on how healthy you are. So, so that has been the cornerstone for my research. Is that, hey, if it's 140 years that we have known glutathione, then the question then becomes: as a pharmacist, I think I can design some products to 
get it delivered to you, to you, and so ho hopefully the body can use it up. And so, like everything else, when you're a young kid, you're naive and fresh out of school, you think you can conquer the world. And hey, said, so, oh, this old researchers, they have no idea what they are doing. So let me let me start up again, uh, and quickly realize that all the technology that exists in the world at at that time, back in the uh, 1990s to early 2000 were actually feeling short of delivering the promise of optimizing growth iron levels. And so I started getting more intrigued as said, hey, what, is, what has the government done worldwide to improve growth iron levels? And the only thing they have ever approved a medic medicine is NAC. Acetylcysteine back in the 60s was approved to improve growth iron level. And even today's date, that's, that's a drug being used in the hospitals to uh, uh, reverse acetaminophen or Tylenol toxicities. And so, well, that's 40, 50 years ago. What have we done since then? Nothing, absolutely nothing. But yet, if you just type in your favorite search engine, glutathione, and there are literally 1,000 plus companies out there selling a product in the hope that we're going to increase your glutathione levels. And they will cite you all the research that, uh, that based on the literature, glutathione should do all these things. Take my product. <laughs> and right. what you see on the other side is that if I take your product, am I going to see benefits? Of, well, we cannot say it because it's not proven yet. Or the stimulant has not been approved by FDA or whatever reason is that, right? So in my mind, I said, okay, that, that's fair enough. When I put into my test into my own patient as a, as a pharmacist, I'm, I'm I'm dealing with uh, very high powered uh, CEOs and pharmacists and uh, doctors themselves as my clients, and so I don't want to give them a product that doesn't work. I'll be out of business very very fast, <laughs> mm -hmm. and so sure enough, I found out that I made the first uh, liposome forms of glutathione back in 1999, and quickly realized that, that hey, it uh, it may have raised the levels a little bit. I don't know how and why, but I was not getting the outcomes I, I was promised. I said, okay, I'm a pharmacist. I can do something else. I mean, so the next thing I do is guess what? I made an intravenous form of glutathione. Mm -hmm. And even today, say that is the highest selling product in the world for intravenous form of glutathione. It's, it's, pretty the, the, it's sold a lot. And I learned very quickly that the results were li literally between five and 15 minutes, and that was it. And that didn't last too long. I said, wait, wait a second. I mean, the body does so efficiently, how on the earth are we not able to get these levels in our body go up high and I stay high normal? What, what's going on? And nothing that I did was actually optimizing glutathione levels at all. Nothing did. NAC did kind of the best thing. So if you take some amino acids or eat your diets to have amino acids, the cysteine, the glycine, the glutamine, did the trick. But everything else beside that one, uh, did did not increase the levels any more than the amino acids could do, uh, 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 could could give the results. So there there was my hunt. There was my hunt. I said, okay. Uh, so in 2002, I started the process of having this newer technology that was emerging back in the early 90s, which was dextrins. Uh, they were using the dextrins molecules to somehow. Uh, transport nutrients, tra transport pharmaceuticals and things like that. And so I said, hey, if can I use that technology to transport glutathione? And the challenge was, can I shove the glutathione, this, the big molecule of glutathione into small rings? Can I shove it in there? That was the challenge I had. I said, oh no. Uh, that took me five years. Five years to figure that portion out with different manipulations. We had PhDs working on us with uh, with me. Uh, between the, him and I, we started working on this project. And by 2007, we had a stable molecule in my hand for the first time. Okay? So the history is, if you look at it, it's that, hey, 140 years goes by. We know about glutathione. We tried all those different modalities to give either IVs or liposome technologies. I used to make inhaled solutions. I used to make suppositories, uh, nasal sprays, eye drops. I mean, you name it, I've made it, right? As a compound pharmacist, I, I, I make a lot of different things like that. Nothing showed me the promise and, and the results I was hoping for. So I, I was always requesting and, and asking myself, there's a better answer, better answer, better answer. 
And in 2007, I got my answer. We got the stable molecule of glutathione in a room temperature in a water-based system that is, was just perfect, right? It was so far advanced of the, of the world, there was actually zero literature supporting what I'm about to do next. I said, wait a second, now what I do? I have this right. molecule, but if you, if you do not know how to use it, right? If you get a if you get a uh, a weapon from let's say uh, interterrestrial uh, adventures that we go by, and we pick it up from other, other sources, we pick up a weapon. If you have no idea how to use it, this weapon is useless, right? So now we have this molecule stable with no data. How the heck are you going to use it? So. I, I was hoping that somebody will will partner with me and do the work and doctors, I call all my doctor friends and I said, I said, you know what? I'm too busy selling IV glutathione. I'm making a ton of money doing so. Why should I do this again? Tell me a good reason, right? Uh, so not interested. Anyways, long story short, I did all work on my own. Uh, in 2020, 13 years later, I launched my book, The Glutathione Revolution, launched the product to the open public uh, because I learned how much to give, how often to give, how often to use the outcomes that comes from glutathione optimizations. Uh, and the world was not ready yet because the whole world was shut down in 2020. So three years goes by again. And now we are here talking in front of you, discussing this issue that the journey started in 2002, 22 years ago. And we are here today. So I'm, I'm passionate. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Ask me any questions you got and we'll be, we'll be uncovering them today. Oh, that's... Fantastic. So let's um, back the truck up for our listeners who might not be as clear about the benefits of glutathione and also maybe the variance genetically about some people produce lots of glutathione, some people don't produce entity. And yep. does that create a difference in, say, use protocols? Uh, yes and no. Um, okay. So... The, the yes part is easy because, hey, if you don't buy it, it doesn't have enough, then take it, right? Uh, the body can produce enough, but if your needs are very high, the body's not able to keep up the demand, right? And so even though your levels are pretty high, but if you have developed symptoms that are associated with low glutathione levels, or if your oxygen stress is high, uh, even though glutathione levels are, are sort of a normal range, my oxygen stress is high, then yes, you, your needs have increased and you may need to support with more glutathione levels. That's what I'm saying. Yes or no, yes, you need to support them, but no, uh, you don't need to, it's not that you don't you don't take it if your levels are normal. You may still need, need it if the needs are there. So what is glutathione? It's a tripeptide. It's a three amino acids coming together. Uh, and does everybody needs it? I would say probably not. Uh, the the difference between your body have and the body's needs, the, there's a discrepancy. The discrepancy happens around the age of 30 to 35, depending on how healthy your lifestyle is. Uh, what you have and what your needs are is much lower than what you have. So if your needs are X number, but but you only can produce so much, there's a discrepancy. That, that, that slight discrepancy initially is kind of put on the side race because what the, what, the, what you tell yourself is, oh, I'm getting old. Creepy forgetfulness kicks in. Uh, you know what? I just have the blues or I just had a baby or I just, I'm just, I'm a brand new father. I get this new job. I'm, I'm trying to juggle three things at the same time, trying to ends meet. So maybe I'm not functioning correctly, right? Oxygen stress is increasing. And then eventually what happens is that, that, uh, that creepy forgetfulness gets into fatigue. And I guess, well, who's not fatigued at the age of 35? Everybody's tired a little bit, right? I'm not able to function as I used to be. And that's just the process of getting old. We tell the stories to ourselves, to comfort ourselves that, okay, it's okay to be having memory loss and being fatigued and tired or not sleeping good uh, or having onset of all diseases that's coming down the pike. It's okay to have those things. But in reality is we are postponing to deal with it until you decide that, no, this is not right. I should not be feeling like this. When you say those words, that's the time to take action. Until the time, ah, don't worry about it. You're still 35 years old. You'll be fine, right? Mm -hmm. Wait till you get 50, <laughs> right? And so 
the question then becomes is that do you supplement? Do you optimize? How do you do different things so that you don't have to go through the whole process uh, and and stay disease free as long as you can? Right. Yes. So that that that's my thing. That's so, is the symptoms is the first symptoms uh, a lower level of energy or increase of fatigue? What other symptoms of low glutathione would there be? So, if you think about glutathione. Uh, his primary function is to reduce oxidative stress or, or reactive oxygen species or reactive nitrogen species or free radicals, whatever we call them, right? Uh, you breathe oxygen every single day. Uh, oxygen is great for your body and it brings a lot of energy, but excess oxygen can also needs to be neutralized and detoxified to get rid of it. The second thing that glutathione does, it also uh, reduces or excretes all the metabolites and your exposure to toxic chemicals uh, through the environment. So when those creeps up in your body, what can you expect to have, right? So initially, of course, the uh, forgetfulness, the tiredness, sleep disturbances. But if you start looking at your biomarkers, right, your sugar levels are kind of a normal. They start rising. They're still normal. Now they start rising. Your triglycerides, starts rising. Your excess cholesterol starts rising. It's still normal, by the way. You're not having a disease yet because what they don't tell you, they, they uh, well, they only tell you is at this range, you have diabetes. Before that, you don't have diabetes, right? But the range from the journey from where you came to where right before you become diabetic, it's a long, treacherous journey, Right? And if you are slowly creeping up, well, that's not my problem. The American healthcare system doesn't pay enough to deal with healthy human beings. They pay well, you. Let, let, let's talk yeah. about that for a second because okay. um, we went through an interesting phase in the last few years since COVID that essentially exposed a pretty dark side to the pharmaceutical, medical, government, industrial complex in that, number one, we suffered a novel pandemic. Number two, yep. the, um, the, the mechanism of the doctors taking the treatment was actually taken out of the equation. There was a top-down decision. And what was surprising is that any doctors who are frontline people dealing with this, who are usually what's what you'd sort of like a bottom up situation where these guys are saying, Hey, we're trying this, trying this. Everyone that was doing something novel or new or interesting or involved some sort of critical theory or critical thinking or um, clinical practice was shut down and yep. everything was railroaded through one idea. Then even, and, and then as time went by, and the revelation started to happen. Well, some of these interventions actually are, as Eric, as Brett and Heather Weinstein stated in their evolutionary biology podcast. Okay, there's, well, we got this wrong. 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 So we, like, of all the options, we got all these things wrong. Well, he goes, if you just play game theory, that's statistically impossible to get everything wrong to something like that. So what is that? So why am I saying that? Well, I think there's something that people don't understand when it comes to transfer payments or, or of, of aging adults. Mm -hmm. And as far as the state is concerned, the state runs on pr pr supposedly providing service to the taxpayers that they can't manage individually. Yep. And then that keeps increasing. And, and medicine and health comes into those things, roads, transportation, all these different jobs. And so all of a sudden now, at, as we have an aging population, we have the inversion problem. And anybody into demographics knows what it is. Countries like Japan and China are going to suffer the most. And North American and Western Europe are next on the chopping blocks with a very aging population who are not that productive in regards to the state. They don't create a lot of revenue. Uh, they don't spend as much. And they definitely don't produce as much. And... From a state perspective, once those people are in the retirement age and not producing, there really isn't an incentive from the state side to <laughs> make people live longer 
lives. In fact, there's an there, one could say there's an inverse relationship to yeah. the benefit of the aging citizen. And so now we're we're in a unique time where for the first time in my life, and I think maybe in the in, in the certain recent history, since conventional medicine um, you know, got distributed widely through government programs or government initiation or regulation, we have someone up there saying, hey, what's making the kids sick? Why do we have a disease epidemic? How does this relate to our food, our diet, our nutrition? And so what we're seeing is an emerging paradigm, even on the political process, about, wait a second, our current methodology of medical intervention isn't working. In fact, people are with the life expectancy of North Americans are now dropping yep. for the first time of any generation. So basically we've squeezed the juice out of the current model. We went from a life expectancy of 67, peaked about 80, all those programs got put into the place. And now we're on the decline from the 80 side and the whole system is starting to run away. Yet there's a subgroup. And I would say that you're part of this group. I'm part of this group is no, no, guess what? There's a great news. We have this emerging paradigm. We're going to be able to extend your healthy or your, your health span, which is your productive and functional capability as a human far greater than we had in the past. And we're seeing a lot of success in this area, you know, biological yes. optimization and some pro-aging technology and all this sort of stuff. You see all these stars and you're like, how does like 60 year old Brad Pitt look like he's 40? And you know, <laughs> how do you know what I mean? And people are wondering these questions because of some of the things they're doing, but those are cost prohibitive. So how does glutathione, if, if we're able to deliver it into the body at a, a level that would keep us at say, arbitrarily our 30s level of glutathione 20s yep 20 20s level of glutathione what impact would that have in this new paradigm of living long and living strong and i don't care if i retire i don't care if i ride off and so i want to be a productive citizen as long as i can excellent question this is by far this is what i'm living and breathing about this one right because you give an example of a celebrity that have endless resources and can do whatever he wants to do to stay young and healthy at all times. Uh, people like you and me don't have the resources to spend that kind of money uh, to do that part. So how can we do this for literally a couple of bucks a day, every single day? What can I do for two to three bucks per day, five bucks a day, every day that I have a potential of improving my health span? And I want to go back to one more thing, why health span is so important. Uh, in, instead of longevity, because if you think about longevity, people are always look at, hey, is there a drug out there that can make me live forever? I said, please don't wait for that, uh, because it ain't coming. So if you look at the history for the last 10,000 years, uh, the only thing that has proven beyond anybody's doubt is that if once we've imp uh, introduced sanitation services, penicillin, and uh, hand washing and gloving and sanitation services. That's the only time we improve the lifespan by a decade or more in a very short amount of time. And what it told us is what? If we can improve the health span, there's a potential for lifespan. But improve the lifespan without a health is a dead, it's it's a it's it's a it's a bad situation for anybody. Nobody wants you alive on a nursing home for 20 years, consuming everybody's resources, including yours, personal resources, uh, to do what? Nothing, right? So the key is how do we improve health span? And so back in the 40s, yes, the biggest issue that we dealt with was uh, infections. So the question is, what, what are we dealing with today? That's where this thing comes into play, right? What are we dealing with today? What is one thing that is killing everybody on this planet today? Okay, and that is oxidative stress. And that's what it comes down to. If you look at the top 10 reasons why people die in the world today, top 10, and you take accidents out of there, and now recently COVID made the list. Uh, but besides those two things, 80% of everything that happens is oxidative stress heart disease, diabetes, you can just name the neurodegenerative uh, diseases on, on cancers, all kinds of things, all into oxidative stress. The key is, 
you cannot have oxygen stress zero or negative because at that point, you also die. You all, your body becomes lazy, lazy, lethargic, and basically becomes non-functional. And the idea behind this thing is, it's you're on a seesaw, you cannot touch the bottom ground. I, well, seesaw is a bad example because kids nowadays have no idea what the, what the heck a seesaw was, right? My mm -hmm. age would be no seesaw, right? One right. person sits there, one person sits there, and you go keep it, keep it up and going up and down. Now the thing is, you're trying to balance it in the midair and stay stable. That's what glutathione can help us. Mm. That's the job of glutathione. Keep you stable. If your RS species goes up higher, the body produces more glutathione and basically comes and brings it down. This goes down and you kind of stay in this equilibrium or a balanced fashion. And with a balanced fashion, guess what? Your body is free and clear of all toxins internally. Your body is functioning properly. Uh, you have no oxidative stress. That means your memory is sharper as, as, as ever before. There's no progression of any diseases because the disease hasn't, hasn't been started yet, right? And so all this thing is doing what? Improving health span. You know, if you think about it, if, uh, my parents retired in the in the early 60s, and I'm in my mid 50s right now, and I have zero plan of retiring anytime in the next 15, 20 years. Zero plans, right? And so I have so much energy to give, and not just me, all my I'm, all my friends and family that I associate with, all the all the patients that I take care of them, they are, are doing so good that they have no plan to retire anytime soon. And so improving health span is the only chance we have to increase lifespan. And today, the only thing that I can affect is RS species. When we all die, which in the next 100 years, I'm going to die for sure. Uh, but in the next 100 years, I'm sure once we once we nip the oxygen stress uh, 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 in the butt, there'll be something else going to emerge. But that's mm -hmm. somebody, somebody else's problem uh, 100 years from today. But today, like 100 years ago, we had microbial issues. We, we nipped that one. Today, antibiotics is all over the world. Everybody uses that. Uh, everybody washes their hands. I mean, we know during the COVID time, people do all kinds of crazy things, right? And so today, oxygen stress. Can we deal with it? Can we bring it back to the market? Can we bring it back to zero? Only thing we can do is we are not looking for a drug. We are looking for a solution to improve our own glutathione levels internally. There's no medicine that's going to save us. We have to work with this bomb inside our body. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, I, I like the the forward thinking process. Matt and I've been on that one for a long, long time. And again, that health span based those, those elements. Of course, we talk about a lot of those elements, but let's go back to um, the glutathione aspect of this. So you've developed a technology that uh, is demonstrable to raise glutathione levels. There's a lot of other theories out there that you've kind of put into, um, put on the podcast that, but they don't actually work because you've actually tried them all privately and, that one, and that's what led you to this. So my listeners are going, well, wait a second, I'm going to get my glutathione IV. I've got this cool like jelly stuff that I take from this number one influencer that works. I'm taking these caps from, you know, my favorite store, my favorite brand. I really want to raise my glutathione levels. And if I drop off on, if I stop taking it, maybe it's going to be worse because maybe there's a placebo effect going on. What, how do we raise our glutathione levels? Is this the only way to do it? Is this the easiest way to do it? Is it the most cost-effective way to do it? And now for a Bioptimizer's fixed digestion tip, supercharge your protein shake. Everyone knows protein shakes are a great way to sneak in extra protein, build more muscle, even replace meals and burn more fat. The problem is the highest quality protein typically absorbs at around 40%. One way to fix this and dramatically increase how quickly and effective your protein shake digests is to add two to three capsules of masszymes into your shake. One research study showed that pre-digested protein during a meal increased muscle growth significantly. To take advantage of this, just blend the open capsules into your shake and within 15 minutes or less, the enzymes will have begun to break down the protein into amino acids. This can make your shakes at least two to three times more potent. Some people do this and sip on their shake while lifting to provide their muscles with a steady stream of amino acids during their workout. 
To save 10% on Masszymes, use the code SHAKE10, that's S-H-A-K-E-1-0, at Masszymes.com. That's SHAKE10 at Masszymes.com. So the best thing to do for that, and again, you got to start early on. You got to start in the 20s, early on, and make sure your diet consists of three amino acids, cysteine, glycine, glutamine. Uh, if if you had to pick one, uh, that would be cysteine. The other two amino acids can be available in literally pretty much anything you eat. Cysteine is something that is not uh, easy to be found. So put in a favorite search engine, call your AI robots, ask them the question, can you pick me cysteine-rich foods? And if you're vegan, vegetarian, carnivore, doesn't matter. You can get options in every categories. There's you, you have cysteine available in all kinds of food elements. So consume those foods on a daily basis. Not once in a while, daily. And so have a variety, right? So yeah, you have avocados, you have asparagus, you have chicken, you have turkey, you have uh, oysters. I mean, as long as the list says that you can eat those stuff for increasing cysteine, that's what I would do first. So cysteine is one of the building blocks to increase glutathione levels. The second thing is it requires uh, on our own bo- own personal preferences to reduce exposure to toxins, right? Uh, if you're a firefighter, I'm so sorry and my head calls of my, my, my salute to you because you're going in this fire knowingly how toxic this fire is. The products of combustion is, is, is bad, is really bad. But if you're not a firefighter, a, a firefighter, but, any, but you're cooking at home, well, there's a cheaper, easier way to cook your foods and staying away from those products of combustion, right? So the induction stoves are great, right? If you have a fireplace in your house, you know, burning log woods in, in your house is, is creating more toxic fumes inside your house. All those things are, all I'm trying to say is reduce your exposure to toxicities as much as possible, right? Eat, uh, there's something called dirty dozen foods. Uh, buy those foods only organic. Then there's, there's a list called clean 15. Buy those foods, doesn't matter which, you, uh, which one you buy. And so save some money on that one, but spend the money on the dirty dozen one, right? And so do whatever, if you have limited resources, you do little things here and there to, to reduce your exposure to toxins. Once that is done, the next step, your body's still going to progress towards the body's going to slow down and not hit enough enzymes to produce its own glutathione. So, but I want to, re- I want to reduce the, the time that you start the supplementation. Because by 35, at the most 40, 40 and above, you are going to need supplementations one way or another, okay? So at that time, you're going to go back to, and say, okay, okay, what do I do now? I have this IVs, I have liposome forms, capsules, lotions, creams, gels, swish, I mean, all kinds of products are out there right now. I'll tell you one thing in my research. Your body does not have a receptor to accept glutathione from outside sources. Let me repeat this one more time. That's huge. Your body cannot accept a finished product like a like glutathione peptide from outside sources. What that means is your body has to produce this internally only. And if you have a defect, gene defect, that you cannot produce glutathione at all, these are the people, they have all sorts of diseases very early on in their life very early on. And the diseases uh, manifest into different various things, cancers and metabolic disorders and all kinds of things comes out of that one, right? Because your body's not able to detoxify clean and all those things. You can drink all the orange juice in the world for vitamin C, but it's not going to be enough to to nullify all the oxidative stress in your body. So uh, if you need to have a glutathione inside your body, you have to have Either take a secretagogue like uh, uh, cysteine capsules and increase the glutathione at that level. Uh, but if that's not possible, if your body cannot produce enough, that's where our technology comes into place is because that was my research trying to figure out how can I fool the body? I mean, the body is not easy to fool, of course. How can I fool the body and deliver this, this tripeptide and 
getting accepted, accepted into the in, into the cellular of, of the of, of the human cells. So what we did was we took dextrin molecules, as I said earlier, dextrin molecule, large gliothione molecule. We did protein enveloping method, squeeze it down in small beads, stuffed inside a dextrin molecule. The dextrin molecule actually has a receptor on a human cell to accept it from outside sources. So the cell goes, the, the cell is present with the dextrin molecule. They go, oh yeah, I like this one. I'll take it. And when it takes it inside, inside is stuffed with what? Glutathione. Now all of a sudden, the body is getting glutathione inside the body for the very first time. And when it does that, there's two things that's happening. One, the body says, oh my God, I got money in my wallet. Where did it come from? I didn't put money in the wallet, but it came over here. So guess what? I don't have to work so hard to, to get go get the money. But I have a free day. What should I do? I can enjoy life. I can do other chores in my house. I can do whatever I want to do, right? That's what the body does. The, the glutathione is not a hormone. So if you take from outside sources, the body doesn't produce its own production. It uses that energy to do something else because to produce glutathione, we need three amino acids, two enzymes, two ATP molecules, which is energy source, and one NAD for electron transfer. Not that we have the glutathione in the, in the cells, we have two spare molecules of ATP and one spare molecule of NAD. Hey, you got to have energy now. With this energy, you can do whatever. Make more proteins, make more muscle, lose weight, uh, help detoxify. You can do other things in your body that until now, you didn't have the energy or the time or the resources to do that part. So over time, over time, three months, six months, two years, five years later, your body's actually getting better and better and better as you age. Now, that is what I call a health span because even though physically outside you may be looking older, but you better believe that your body functions are getting better and better as we age. And I have an example for that. When the time comes, I'll share the example with you as well. Sure. Let's hit it right now. Let's go for the example. Oh, hit it right now. All right. Okay. So my dad, uh, bless, uh, bless his soul. He passed away this year at the age of 89. Uh, 11 years ago, when I first discovered the glutathione molecule, he had type 2 diabetes, arthritis, blood pressure, thyroid conditions, you know, cannot do much things, weight weight issues. Uh, and he just got diagnosed with, uh, with a complete blockage of his artery, 90% block. He could have died of a heart attack anytime. Uh, so we put a stent in there and out comes from the hospital with a slew of medications that he used to take every day. I said, Dad, you have a choice. All these meds are one glutathione. Well, son, what do you suggest? I said, well, you had no cholesterol issue, but you had a heart attack. Well, you had blocked arteries, but I would not take cholesterol pills. I'll take a blood thinner for, for, for a few months until the glutathione kicks in, but they, I'll stop that as well. So he did that part. Started using glutathione 11 years ago. He was a patient number one. You know, I, as you can told, I did, did not launch the product in the public yet. So he was patient number one, my dad. Uh, before he died this year, he was walking six miles per day, free of diabetes, free of arthritis, enjoying his life. He traveled the world every single year, including the year 2020, 2021, and 2022. He was traveling the world. The best travel he had was in 2020 and 2021 because the whole world was shut down. And since he was in his 80, he could go anywhere he wanted to go, right? People said, oh, you shouldn't have been traveling. I said, well, that's okay. I got nothing to lose, right? He traveled the world and he was enjoying life. Unfortunately, this year, he got a little bit too cocky. Uh, he was out traveling in India in, in February, March, uh, went eat some food, get some food poisoning, Got dehydrated, fell down, broke his skull. Next day, he was gone. Oh, it was a very awful death. But it, I, what I'm saying is that at the age of 78 or 75 and 80, he regenerated his body. Right, which is which is really free. powerful. <sighs> of course, that would go along in lines. You know, there's a I believe in Indian uh, astrology. Vedic astrology, as it's known here in the West, that uh, the day of your death is predetermined, not necessarily the method. That's right. And and that 
I always say this in bioptimizers, I'm not sure that we can guarantee that you can live longer because I think when your numbers are up, your numbers are up. And if they're not up, you sort like you see people surviving situations that they shouldn't. And you go, what's going on? How's that possible? I think there's factors outside of um conscious mind. <laughs> yeah, out, outside of the Newtonian paradigm of reductionist thinking, I think there's external yep. forces yet to discover, certainly in the current awareness that are influencing. But I'm very confident that we can improve the quality of life in one's health span. So if you took pretty much anyone at 78 years old, especially with that outcome or any health situation and said, look, I'm going to I'm going to extend the quality of your life for the next decade. Yep. You'll know, do all the things you want to do, hang out with your grandkids, do these things, participate, whatever that is that you, you like to do. But you're going to die suddenly and unexpectedly. Or we can draw this out for the next 10 years through a laundry list of medications, surgeries, treatments, um, you know, depressing states, immobility, all of those stuff. The, 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 I think 99.9% .9 of the people say, no. Take me out suddenly without any long-term repercussions. I'm out. That's it. It's over. I'm done. There's no suffering. There's no extended stuff. It's just boom, done. I think most people would take that equation. Absolutely. And it was very hard. We were very heartbroken when we heard the message because an hour before his death, he called all of us. Just his FaceTime and said, hey, I'm in the hospital. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. You know, nothing is fine. Uh, everything was great and okay. He was... I mean, he was just enjoying life and he was just talking to us like nothing ever happened to him. And an hour later, he was gone. Wow. Yeah. That's and that's that's, that's a death I wish upon myself personally. Uh, yes, it's it's hard to swallow that pill, but knowing what he could what he could have suffered for the last 10 years with all the medication, because I I I'm a pharmacist, I know what medications right. do to you. And I know but the once you get on six or ten medications a day, oh my God, that's itself the death sentence itself. And I know the progression of the disease was going to be for him. And for him to travel the world until the age of 89 on his own, by the way, he was single, right? On his own. He didn't, he didn't, we didn't go with him. He packed up his bag or himself. I just buy the tickets to him and he just left. He goes. And he opens his house, does the laundry, does the whatever. He does amazing. everything on his own. He lives on his own. It's amazing to have that quality of life. And that's what I want to, I want everybody to have that option. At a reasonable a price. So let's get back to um, raising the levels through uh, this novel supplementation that you've been able to um, develop. Um, so if there's anything you add, want to add to the development or the efficacy or any anecdotal or clinical or research based, feel free to, or we can just dive okay. right into um, how do we get our glutathione levels up? We've pretty so, much established why it's important. Why it's important. We know that we can raise the levels with the topical spray that we have developed uh, because actually it can get into us cellularly for the first time. Uh, the next question for me was how much to give, how often to give, how long to give for. And so that mm -hmm. took me a few years to figure that push out. So now you don't have to think about it. Uh, follow the instructions that are on the box itself. Uh, but we figured out that if you can uh, get about between about 100 milligrams, 150 milligrams per day or twice a day, that's going to raise your glutathione levels to a high normal ranges, like youthful ranges, not like a 50-year-old range. I'm talking about 20-year-old wow. range, right? Wow. Uh, compare that to intravenous or any of the dosage form you can get. In fact, oral capsules, FDA has a, uh, given a grass status uh, to glutathione. That means it's generally regarded as safe at any concentration. <laughs> I mean... You can take as many as much as you want, but that's not true because it's true because it doesn't get absorbed, but doesn't it, the body just breaks it down. Right. But with the topical version, the since it doesn't get broken down, I had to figure out how much to give, and so we figured that was dosage out. And so now that we have known all these things, if we take four sprays twice a day of any of the products that we have, that should be enough to raise your levels to high normal ranges, and that's all. You, it's it's like a one dose forever. It's two bucks wow. per treatment, so about two to three bucks per treatment, and that's it. Compare that to IV for a fifty to two hundred dollars a treatment, uh, only for, for last for fifteen minutes. This will last you at least four to six hours, and after repeated use, uh, day, twice a day, every day for about three to four months, it can last up to twelve hours. Literally, wow. you can have a uh, array of glutathione in your body at all times by just twice twice a day applications over time. 
So you do it like morning and night? Is that typically what you do? I do morning and evening. Uh, yeah. I forget sometimes I do it at nighttime. Uh, and, you know, I'm not saint. I don't pr I pretend to be saint. I drink alcohol once in a while, maybe once or twice a month. I'll have a glass or two of, of, of my favorite beverage. Uh, and that day, I will probably double, triple, or quadruple the dose for that one evening because I know what alcohol do, does to your body. Uh, and so it depletes all the glutathione outside immediately. So I'll replace it right away. Uh, a, a very high dosage of that part. But that's only for that one evening. But normally, yeah, four sprays twice a day gets you enough. I travel a lot. Uh, travel days are also pretty nasty for me. So I, I'll probably double up the dose on that day as well sometimes. Uh, but uh, uh, wait, I want to make sure everybody understands that part. One thing is glutathione, even though it's completely safe and benign, according to FDA, uh, when you get at a very fast pace and a body accepts it in, in a way that you can use it right away, it's like if I give you money in your stock market, well, you have to sell the stocks and make some money and then use get your money in the bank and in, in your wallet before you can use it up. If you get the money in the wallet right now, oh my God, I can spend it today, right? If I get the glutathione straight in your body, in your cells immediately, the body's ready to use it right now. And when he gets this glutathione level right now, the first thing it does, it 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 kind of releases all the toxins out of the body. It's like, hey, go, go get rid of this crap out of the system, right? And when you do that part, sometimes the body says, oh my God, this is too much to release. Rashes can happen, headaches may happen, stomach cramp, diarrhea, Something like this can happen, you know. That means your body is just having too much toxicities and is losing everything at one point. The body cannot handle it. Please slow it down. You're not going to get an attaboy from me that, hey, thanks for plowing it through this uh, uh, treacherous time. No, you don't have to suffer from that part. Reduce it down. See what your body can tolerate, and then slowly, slowly, slowly raise it to to the back to four sprays twice a day. Once at that level, you should be fine after that. So where do people get this amazing product? I'm like, okay, like, you know, my, my assistant is going to be on a speed dial here. <laughs> I, I uh, want some of this. Cause I've always been curious about the, uh, you know, I've read a lot about glutathione. Um, I've tried a bunch of different products from different people with all the promises and didn't feel any results. I'm, I'm just straight up. And it's one of the reasons I wanted to do this podcast. Is there a novel way to get it? Because it, the theory is awesome. The biology is awesome. Um, and then also I have suboptimal genetics on gl glutathione. So it was an area that I wanted to identify, particularly of how do I raise this level and keep it up over my life. So I'm very interested in learning more about this. So where do people get this product? Before I say that, I'm going to tell you one more thing about the genetics, because you just mentioned genetics. And the, thank God for today, the costs of gene testing has come down so low. It yeah. used to be cost prohibitive for anybody. To well, do we couldn't it. even do it not that long ago. Yeah, fifteen years ago it was cost prohibitive. Now that the cost, every every start doing it, the cost is coming down and down. Everybody is affordable. What we are finding out is there's a big chunk of population. They have this gene snips. It's it's a mutation, so it's it gets expressed over time. It doesn't express when you are young. Express gets over time. But even this gene mutation, where two things could happen: either your body cannot produce glutathione at all or the body's need for growth is extremely high because you have methylation pathway defects, you have other defects that can increase the toxic load in your body, right? Either way, you're going to need supplementation. So yeah, uh, if you cannot produce it all, that's a, that's an easy one. Just replace the glutathione right away. It's done. But if you have other gene defects or SNPs that, you that your body cannot detoxify fast enough, that can also increase the need of glutathione. So both ones, you have to do that part. And so the gene testing is actually, actually very important. I, I, I just did a genomic webinar just recently at, at a doctor's conference with, with another physician. Uh, but yeah, if you, if you go to my website at aurowellness.com, A-U-R-O wellness.com, uh, subscribe to the newsletter. I, I usually email all my uh, people, my customers, as well as physicians, all the events I do, my, my lecture presentations that I do. I, I really do not say, oh, this is only for doctors. This is too high power. The, the patients cannot understand. No, I send everything out to everybody because I want people to at least hear what the, what the doctors are hearing also, 
right? So I, I email everybody out, anything that I do, anything I, I speak on, anything I, I learned, I heard, I will, I'll educate all my customers. We had another article just got published uh, last Friday in the Journal of Antioxidant. And so this week's newsletter, I'm going to be doing all the synopsis of that article and sending out to all my uh, listeners as well. So yeah, support me by subscribing to the newsletter so that way I can spread the word for everybody. So if you get the newsletter, are you able to purchase the product? Oh, yes. No, no, absolutely. Oh, my God. Uh, the product is called Glitterill. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm, I apologize from, from the get-go. I am not uh, naming the product kind of guy. So I named the product as a chemical name. <laughs> so it's, a, you know, that's... Typical pharmacist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can't so it's called what? Glitterill. Glutaril. G-U-L-T-A-R-I-L. G G L U T A R Y L. Yeah, it's wow. an enzyme. It's you know, yeah, I, yeah, I'm, I'm come on. Somebody tell me you, you should you could have hired anybody else to name a product. Why'd you name literal? I said, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> it is what it is. You know, Sweet. you give a pharmacist to name a product. That's what they will do. <laughs> well, I'm going to give it a try. How fast do you think that you can uh, produce results? So the results, it, it all it's it's sporadic. If people have I have seen results in less than five minutes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I go to conventions and people that have gene mutations where they have depleted glutathione levels for decades, they apply one dose, one dose, and they say, I can feel something in my brains now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Less than five minutes, right? Yeah. Those personal populations are very small. Keep in mind, I go to conventions because these people that are coming there, they've been struggling for their health for decades. So they're finding yeah. for solutions. So it's easy to find one in a one in a hundred like that coming to my uh coming to talk to me and I I I cure them, I'm not cure them, but I, I help them instantaneously. But out in the open public, uh I see the results in as early as two weeks or less, you know. And again, it's a lot of people are completely healthy and they may not see a change for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. But rest assured that you know that you're getting the right product and the, the results are going to be that in, uh, uh, incremental. Yeah. My ball players, my ball players so into the health, right? I mean, these are like 25, 30-year-old NFL athletes, uh, National Hockey League athletes and baseball players. I mean, these are prime machines, if you call them, right? Uh, and they use it. And within one or two days, they can notice a difference like this. Yeah, yeah. Almost anyone who's been at the professional athletic level has an acute awareness of how everything impacts their body because they're constantly internally monitoring and regulating certain things. And there's also an external representation of of, of performance. And then also there's a subjective about recovery. And now the technology and the best teams are actually looking at those recovery models for, you know, a high, like it's a big thing in football, for example, I think the, yep. the Los Angeles chargers brought a specific strength coach out of Michigan because their data of determining player workout frequency was able to reduce the injury rate significantly. They built these extraordinary mathematical models and they had these monitoring things that could determine that above and beyond even what the athlete was able to do because most athletes will go even when it's suboptimal. Yeah, uh, you yeah. know, and yeah, 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 that's it's part of this the 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 both the positive, the flip side of the high performer is that they'll go when they're suboptimal. Yep. And uh, that's like one other question before we go, because it kind of goes back to something you said earlier, and that's the relationship with NAD and glutathione, oh. because um, we re I regularly do um, IV clinics and NAD is uh, part of it. You know, there's a 750 to 1000 milligram a day. You'll go maybe uh, three, five days on that protocol and by the it's it's a little bit uncomfortable the first two or three days and all of a sudden it's like your body adapts yeah. and now you can drip the nad really quickly and the commensurate benefits have been long, long uh, just keep getting better so in two ways one i don't need to do the nad as frequently mm -hmm. so before i was doing it every four months now it's every six before i was doing it five days now 
three days is usually good. Sometimes I only need two days and I'm, I'm like, oh, I'm good. I, I'm, I'm back to that like really high energy zone that I like to write at. How does that impact NAD uh, or, do, or is there anything that you've discovered how, on how to stack them together or work together? So glutathione is actually a energy sparing molecule. So as I said earlier, to make glutathione, you need two ATPs and one NAD. If you're getting glutathione from outside sources, it's sparing two molecules of ATP and one molecule of NAD. So over time, you're constantly rising your NAD levels. But NAD, again, NAD is an electron transfer molecule. It, it by itself doesn't have a lot of properties other than just connects the two dots and, hey, transfer the electrons from here to there, right? NAD, NAD, DH, NAD, DH, NAD again, and it keeps on flip-flopping all the time. Uh, but you have to have enough of those to have all the chemical processes happening very efficiently. And so having glutathione in there over time can, can de definitely increase your NAD levels. I have only done NAD shots once. That's it. Just one time. I haven't done a shot in the last seven years, five, six wow. years. Wow. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's that's so so what you're saying is over the def what you feel is over the long term if you're doing this because there's NAD built into the supplement essentially that it will naturally also raise your NAD levels yeah because I have an NAD product made up the same way I have it in my lab I haven't released the product yet to the public yet it's in my lab I've been testing here and there and I'm not seeing earth-shattering benefits. It's been four or five years. Or I already had this product for five years now. And I'm not seeing earth-shattering benefits from NAD supplementation at this point. And so I mm -hmm. said, hey, do I want to release this product? Uh, probably not at, at this time. I, I never seen anything out of the supplementation side either myself, yeah. but I did notice a difference on the IV side of NAD. But I don't know. I, I don't know. Like you talked about with, with this one here, um, particularly with the glutaryl, for example, we're talking about or taking gluten like glutathione excuse me on an iv level then you're, you're raising and then drops off your body can't like it's it's not sustained and i don't know if that's the case with nad and it certainly seems yeah, nad different. seems different because of that experience i have like you get through the yeah. first few days it's uncomfortable and all of a sudden it all kicks in and you just drain the bag really quickly and like it's three o'clock in the morning and you feel like you know running and stuff <laughs> <laughs> it's an amazing product it's an amazing product for sure yeah. So the website is oralwellness.com. That's where you can find the newsletter. The product is called called Gluteril, uh -huh. um, and it's a proven way to take a supplementation uh, topographically, I guess. You just put the spray on, and it gets into your system, which is uh, obviously it. cool and convenient. And uh, you're off to the races to uh, expand your possibility on health span. Is that correct? That's exactly right. I have two products in there, uh, two different concentrations. Uh, and I'll tell you right now, more is not better. Mm. Okay. So please do not buy the the more concentrated version because you think that you need a lot of glutathione. Uh, everybody just start low first, just so the body can acclimate to it. And if your body can acclimate it, then you can try the higher dose concentration at, at the second month, fine. But the first month, go slow. Uh, make sure your body is not going to... Unleash detox, <laughs> detox, <laughs> the detox yeah. yeah, yeah. Dr. Patel, this has been super enlightening. Thank you for resolving a question in my mind that I've had for well over a decade. It's probably closer to two decades on this glutathione equation. I think that was very thorough and enjoyable. I hope for our listeners uh, that you enjoyed today's topic. I, I, I encourage you to go and try oral wellness, go to oralwellness.com, get the information from the good doctor and give glutaryl a shot let us know how it works how you feel and until then i'm way lightheart from bioptimizers this is the awesome health podcast we'll see you on the next episode